Assassin's Creed Origins has been officially announced. And I'm guessing you want more details? Me too. So I went to Ubisoft Montreal to get them. The Origins team is made up of key members of the crew that brought Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag to life. And when they set out to make this grand adventure, they knew they needed a setting to match their ambitions. You know what we say history is our playground? Ancient Egypt is a, you know, it's a romantic setting, it's a mystical setting. There's a lot of diversity in the landscape of Egypt, and that's why it's fascinating. And that's why it was also amazing and uh, super inspiring for the team to recreate. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is pyramids. We we're going to have that into the game, and that's, it's a no-brainer. But ancient Egypt is much more than, than ancient pyramids. So history is like a, is like a, a puzzle, right? My job and the way the, work, the team works is really to find out all these small details with this information. So what are the flowers, the trees that were back in Egypt? What were the animals? We tried to respect both the culture, the Egyptian culture, and to putting them into the game, uh, and also having something that's, that's interesting. How I actually saw ancient Egypt, first of all, in my imagination. I mean, you, you only see like, you know, sands and sort of, you know, pyramids, and it's really kind of dry. But actually, you know, during that time, it was lush and, you know, it was full of life. We have now the capacity from a technological standpoint to be able to create a, a massive countryside. You know, it's not a, it's not a city, it's, it's a whole country with many cities, many villages, many exotic uh, landscapes. This is why we decided to remove the minima, which is we want you to enjoy and to actually experience the beautiful world we're bringing to you. You will have to play the game to put some icons in the game, you know. Also the fact that we have a time of day that is systemic, we made sure that every single moment in the time of day is almost like a painting, you know. That's not something that is done, like, it's not automatic, it's really crafted. The world is, I think, has never been so alive and so lush and so interesting. And I hope players will, will have a lot of hours of fun uh, into Egypt with us. We started by saying we're in Egypt, which meant large landscapes, which meant vehicles like animals, like uh, chariots, camels. All of this, we felt we needed to make sure that all of this worked within the combat system. So naturally, we start talking about range combat, using the bow, using uh, throwable weapons. We allow the fight to be way more responsive, way more dynamic, so that the player can really play the way they want. In previous ACs, when you attack, the hero and the enemy came together, no matter the distance, effectively. This is gone now. Now, all of a sudden, your spacing in the fight, how many enemies you're fighting, where are they, matters. If you swing in open air, you can. And you could screw yourself over by doing that. In melee combat, we have a lot of different types of weapons. We've got maces, swords, axes, uh, shields. You know, the reach of your weapon matters. The stats of your weapon matter. So you have to really judge your position in the fight, mixed in with the length of your weapon, the speed of your weapon, the positions of the enemies. And in range combat, we have different types of bows. So we have uh, the most famous one is probably the Predator bow, which is a, the equivalent of a sniping rifle. We got a bow that has a super high rate of fire. And we have a, a bow that is the equivalent of a shotgun that shoots five arrows at the same time. We have many types of enemies with their own weapon loadout. Their weapon loadout dictates the way they fight. So players will have to learn how does the enemy with the spear and the shield work versus uh, the guy with the huge mace. And reading their behavior in the fight then asking themselves, what am I comfortable using against these types of enemies in this situation? So it's a, it's a much different system than we've had in the past, but it's afforded us uh, really brand new experiences for players that I'm excited for people to try and play and, and give us feedback on it. Really, you, you cater your play style to what you like based on how you level up in the skill trees. And that's something we want to also visualize and show on the player. So it's not only something that we play in the stats, but it's also something you will see on the character. We give players many avenues within the crafting system, within the inventory system, uh, within the skills. So uh, a concrete output of this means that you cannot assassinate anybody in the game with one shot. If you dedicate yourself to crafting your hidden blade, to increasing the, the damage that it can do, you might be able to get there. But you have to dedicate yourself to it. Now going more action RPG, forced us to say, no, no, you have to deal with the challenges of the game, the levels of the enemies, and um, you can be that super stealthy assassin, but dedicate yourself to it. Now, because we have levels, we have uh, RPG mechanics, it has afforded us to be able to do epic bosses. So, in, in the main story of the game, 
but also in the, in the world where we know some players, if they're really comfortable with the challenge of the fight, they can go and push themselves to, to fight the most ultimate bosses. It's a very big world also, so to make sure that the player would be constantly engaged within that world, um, we created um, NPCs that have their own agenda. They have their own purpose in the world, so they, they work, they go back to their home to sleep, and you can help them with the quest system. So you meet them, you talk with them, and they say, hey, I need some help with this. And as a player, you get to make a decision whether or not you want to engage with that specific type of, a, of NPC. So I think that's interesting, and that also gives flexibility to explore the world the way you want to and live the story the way you want to as a player. The player, of course, picks up these quests and chooses what they want to work on. Sometimes the quests will intermingle. Sometimes you're in the middle of one quest and you'll see a que another quest uh, person walking by and you can jump into that. And we wanted this very organic feel to the world. There's a lot of people to meet, a lot of characters, and they have a lot of stories to tell. It's not only an origin story, it's also witnessing key moments of the franchise and the reasons why decisions were made. Was it just someone decided, I'm going to put on a hood? No, no, there, there's stories behind all of this and these are the experiences that you explore in the game. Uh, so for sure, Eagle Vision is, is one more of those elements where why is it called Eagle Vision and where did it really come from? Bayek has also uh, this connection, this very special connection with, uh, with the Eagle Senu that you can use, you know, to really scout and, and plan ahead, you know. So with your eagle, you'll be able to spot, you know, who's, uh, what the challenge is about, you know, seeing the level, the number of enemies. In this exact setting was also the perfect moment and the perfect, actually, world and culture and mythology to, to see, to witness the, the birth of the, of the brotherhood. I mean, it's, it's so much fun, man. It's so great. Like, it's so, so cool and it's an honor, you know. Uh, but telling an origin story, you get to put some pieces of the puzzles together and explain a little bit more to the player, uh, so that's really cool. My name is Abu Bakr Salim and I play Bayek of Siwa in Assassin's Creed Origins. Just to go back a bit to talking about how this came about, you know, you've, you've worked on television shows like 24 and Black Mirror and recently Strike. Have you worked in animation or video games before? You know, how did you get the part? I've never worked in animation or video games ever before. This is my first game. And uh, yeah, I actually auditioning for this, it was advertised as an animated TV series, which needed motion capture. And, um, you know, different characters, you know, different time frame, different, you know, it was, it was, very, it was very different. And um, did the first round, it was great. Then got to the second round, and that's when they dropped the bomb that it was Assassin's Creed. And yes, I died a little inside, but it was, it was a beautiful death. Came back to life and did the best I could. <laughs> and yeah, so then, uh, but yeah, it was, um, it, was a, it was an interesting process because it was very different to normal other auditions. Um, you know, the camera was positioned in a way in which it captured the whole room. So they needed to see your body and see how, you, how you'd move and how you'd, you know, how the character would move. And you, I had the animation director there as well as a, a cinematography director there. And um, yeah, they direct me differently in, depending on, you know, what they wanted to try and bring out of the character. And yeah, so it was, it was really exciting. It was an interesting way of auditioning. So how was the process of, of doing it? You talked there about seeing how the character would move and how the character yeah. would, would fit in the space. Obviously in the past it used to just be voice recording, whereas now you've got the motion capture, you've got a camera on your face. How hard does that make it? You know, do you have to be very aware of how you're moving and how you're expressing things as you speak? I mean, I guess... Uh, I mean, like, with acting anyway, you kind of have, you, you don't really, you're, you're thinking a bit about how you are moving and how you're speaking and different, you know, but at the, but at the end of the day, you're still, you, you know, you've got this kind of objective and you've got to try and, you've, you, you've got to follow that through. So you're not really thinking much about it. What was, what was interesting, though, was because we had the animation director in the room, you know, certain things like, you know, either touching someone or hugging someone, um, you had to do, you know, in a specific way because otherwise the animators would have uh, difficulty, you know, editing that. And it's, and it is, it, there, you have to kind of, you do have to think of, okay, I'm not necessarily going to stab you, 
I'm going to stab the air. You have to react, and then you know that's the way kind of the, the way movement sort of worked in the in those in those uh, in those rooms. It wasn't necessarily as clear as doing small movements. You still had to do big movements so it could be captured, but also you didn't want to do two grand movements, otherwise it would look ridiculous. So yeah. So how long did the process take? Oh man, I'm still like it's like ages. <laughs> I've been working on it for now nearly a year. So um, yeah, so it's because it is because there is so much content and there's so much to um, to record and you know constantly you know new things are being added into the game. It, the, the process never stops. So yeah, so it's, it's now I've, I think I've nearly been I've been working on it for now nine nine ten months. So yeah, back and forth from Montreal doing the motion capture and and VO stuff, which has been. I mean, it's, it's been great fun all the time, but like it's, it, yeah, it's been a very long process. Very different to film and TV, where it's like after three months or four months on TV, that's it. You know, then you do the ADR, then you wait for it to come out. No, I think with, the video, with this anyway, the, it's constantly evolving and constantly adapting, which is great. You mentioned earlier that you'd uh, played some of the previous Assassin's Creed games, and obviously people have got their favorite assassins, but they've all kind of gone on quite a journey through the stories, like Altair going from like a reckless character to being sort of more thoughtful, like an old man mm. looking for meaning and, and answers, and Ezio going from like being sort of a to being like this big leader of men. Does, does Bayek go on a similar journey? I think Bayek's journey is really, it's, it's, it's very internal. I think that's what's so interesting about this, this game anyway, is that his journey is, you know, it, it is again the, orig or the origins of the Brotherhood. But there is a there is a journey, and from what I've done and from what I've read, it, it's it's not as as big as Ezio. He doesn't make as as big of a change as Ezio, or you know, or even like Connor. It's very, it's a it's a personal journey, and I think that's what's quite exciting about this game is that you know they've gone a completely different way, of you know portraying these characters, portraying the world. You know, Ubisoft have taken a, you know taken risks and beautiful risks. And it's, yeah, it's going to be great to see the, the finished product. So obviously nobody knows how people in 49 BC spoke in terms of like accents and uh, dialects and stuff. How did you and the team settle on how Bayek should speak? Oh, well, we had, um, <laughs> so that's a good question. It was, a, it was very much a creative process. So, you know, we had a dialect coach in there. We, we again, we've got no, you know, we had a historian there. But what was, what was great was, because there was nothing that we could go back to to look at, it gave us a lot of room to play and create. So we ended up, you know, we, we tried, especially with dialect, to try and get, you know, Egyptian words in there as much as we could um, to kind of keep in with that immersion. Uh, you know, when it came to even deciding on accents, we worked a lot with, with an accent coach and, um, you know, coming to certain decisions on saying certain things. So, for example, um, you know, Bayek doesn't roll his R's whereas some Nubians might roll their R's, or even, no, even the Greeks would roll their R's. So these sort of rules were kind of set in stone, and then we'd kind of, you know, we would be creating this, this accent, this world within it as we went on, which was great fun to do, really great fun to do. So, yeah. When, when you were doing the motion capture, were you working with the other actors in the game, like, um, like Aya, the, the woman who plays Aya and... Uh... Yeah, so, um, yeah, I was played by Alex Wilton Regan, and she is a force to be reckoned with. Incredible, incredible woman. Yeah, so, I, you know, a lot of my scenes took place with her. Um, it also took place with uh, Zora Bishop, who plays Cleopatra. And, um, yeah, it was, it was great fun working with them and working with all the other actors as well on the mocap floor. Um, because, again, there was someone to play off. I mean, normally, you know, I'm sure voiceovers, normally you're in a booth and you record and the other person's recorded the dialogue before, so you don't really have that connection. Whereas on the actual floor, you've got this, you know, you've got this space to create and play. And it's, it's so much fun, so much fun. And I mean, Alex, I mean, I was a fan of Alex before, you know, before I even, you know, started playing Assassin's Creed. You know, she's, she's done so many video games. So it was pretty crazy to think, oh my God, she's playing my wife. <laughs> like, it's insane, but, but yeah. It must be pretty tough to do anything romantic scene-wise with the big camera. Oh, stuff it's so in much fun! It's so much fun with the, with a the camera there doing kissing, and I mean, I don't know how the facial animators are coping with seeing my kissing face. I mean, I'm sure they're having a lot of fun and laughing at me behind my back about it. But no, I mean, yeah, it is quite hard to do intimate scenes, especially 
with the Velcro as well moving, if you hug someone, you might get stuck to them and you have to kind of pull yourself off. So you've got to be aware of all these different things. But um, but again, it's all part of the joy of, of, of making a video game. It's all part of that that fun process of, of being silly. You know, it, it is, it's like, it's, it is, it, that's, that's what it is. It's just playing. Do you feel that you'd like to continue doing stuff with video games and voice work? Oh man, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. It's it's such a it's such an interesting way of telling a story. It's it's so you know this this way of interactively, you know, communicating these journeys that you know these people are going through. It's it's so it's so powerful that it's yeah. I'd 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 love to continue being a part of that. Because it's it's so different to film and TV. You know, you're giving an hour or so, or two, or even sometimes if it's a series, eight, twelve hours to, you know, to the viewer. Whereas with games, you're giving hundreds of hours, and you're going, and you know, there is these worlds in which they're exploring and creating. You know, that they're that they're you know they're viewing and experiencing, and it's yeah, it's it's so rich. It's such a rich way of storytelling. People are actually playing you rather than them watching you. So they're, they're watching get really exactly. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. You know, participating in that. You know, in that. In that journey that the character is going through, they're going to connect to certain things, react to certain things, you know, with this character, and it's, it is, it's, it's a beautiful, yes, yeah, a beautiful experience. Are you the kind of actor who, who can't watch stuff that they're in, or are you going to actually play, <laughs> play this? Game? Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm as like as I've said, I'm gonna be out there queuing up, you know, the day before, waiting for that launch and playing that game to death. I'm not gonna lock myself in a room and play it. It's yeah, I cannot wait. Cannot wait. I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna cringe at some moments and think, oh, why did I say it that way? But at the same time, I'm so excited for it. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Origins is a very exciting project within the brand because it's the first time we've gone back so far in history, right back to 50 BC to Ptolemaic Egypt. This is an era where the line of the Ptolemies are coming to an end. Cleopatra is about to come into power and Rome is on the doorstep. So it's a very interesting time with three big factions interacting, the, the Ptolemaics, which are like the ancient Greeks, the local Egyptians, and now the Romans also coming in. So it really is a, a cauldron of different societies coming together. In Assassin's Creed Origins, the story is centered around Bayek, who is the last Magi. Magi is a sort of like an ancient sheriff. He really believes in doing what is right by the Egyptian people. Here in Singapore, we worked on the, the water tech, the Fayoum, and the exotic naval. The relationship between the Singapore studio and Assassin's Creed is a very long one. The first mandate, actually, of the newly born studio back in 2008 was actually to work on the secret locations of Assassin's Creed 2. And since then, we've always worked together and we trusted them to deliver high quality content. And we needed them also to bring the uh, water tech to, to the world of origins. Water was the lifeblood of Egypt. In ancient times, the people were really reliant on, on a good harvest and the Nile would bring life through Egypt and life around the waterways was, was rich and vibrant. You'd have fishermen, you'd have people cleaning their clothes, you'd have crocodile hunters. So much life was centered around the waters. Our main mandate was to develop the best looking water in video game. In the past, when we tried to create some water on AC Black Flag or AC3, uh, it was mainly done by artists. So if they wanted to have a specific loop, they, they needed to, to set up many variables. Since the size of the, our game increased from one AC to the other, so the, the main mandate that we had was to be able to produce a lot of content really fast and to have this process made very friendly for artists. We create a, a lighting model specific for water that replicate what they have in nature, which is the phytoplankton, the sedima, and the yellow matter. You basically uh, control those, the amount of property in a meter cube, and from those property, you're gonna have a different water color. Wes? Our water ecosystem simulation technology allow us to create a lively ecosystems with a believable water traffic. With WES, a civilian can wander on his rib boats through the water canals of Memphis before returning home for the night. The players can use playable boats to navigate through the waters or they can enter the underwater seamlessly to explore and take part in combat while underwater. 
All these systems and features come together to deliver a memorable water experience for the player. Fayum is the southernmost of the five playable regions in Assassin's Creed Origins and it has a lush lake and the Nile and has a lot of agriculture. It was called the bread basket of Egypt where a lot of the food was made and brought back to the other bigger cities like Memphis and Alexandria. One of the team's proudest moments was the creation of the many characters that we have in Fayum. The player gets to understand their hopes and struggles, which gives the player a strong motivation to solve their problems in Fayum. The narrative theme for the quest in Fayum is the disputed lands, a land torn apart between Egyptian farmers and Greek nobility. Factions fighting from cultural reasons, for dominance reasons, also for uh, resources reasons. Fayum happens to be uh, at the edge, uh, and this edge is a kind of a border towards uh, a no man's land. So it was quite an interesting contrast to play with a very lush, uh, rich and resourceful metropolis like uh, Crocodilopolis and then right away at the corner you are at the desert. So Fayum World is one of the largest maps that we did on Assassin's Creed. We split our team into smaller groups. Each group actually is in charge of one region of Fayum. To create interesting challenge and variety for the player, uh, we started to look at the best practices and apply design principles to our work. For example, when the player is travelling through the world on horseback, uh, we try to put certain key elements and key points of interest that they are able to consume and engage from time to time within the world. Honestly, E3 2017 was a blast. We needed a part of the game that we could showcase a lot of systems and to uh, really uh, showcase the diversity of the world. And this region of the world is exactly doing that. You see some deserts, you see uh, some water with the big lake Moiris. The Polish level of this area was uh, very well suited for E3 demo. And this demo uh, really nailed it. The Singapore team created all the naval missions in Assassin's Creed Origins. Naval battles were a large part of Egyptians' ancient history and we really wanted to capture that. We wanted to capture the epic, visceral nature of naval combat in the open seas. So we created a brand new ramming system with the ship destruction system. That, together with the ability to command fleet catapults from your allied fleet, allowed us to refresh the naval experience within the brand. One of the things that we did with the ramming system is to bring the camera up close and personal to the front of the ship so the player is able to see exactly what happens when your ram hits an enemy ship. So Triremes and Felucas are largely naval crafts used in the Egypt world. They provide various gameplay opportunities for the player. Triremes largely served a military function in ancient Egypt. They were important in terms of um, protecting VIPs or preventing piracy. Felucas are versatile um, watercrafts back in ancient Egypt. They were used in a variety of different ways, such as agriculture, transportation, and even religious aspects. So there are six different variants of triremes in the Egypt open world. Um, they're there to provide a variety for the player in terms of gameplay as well as visually. By far, the mandate that we have taken on in Assassin's Creed Origins is the largest that we have had so far in the Singapore studio. I think we can all be really proud that we have achieved so much in this project. I'm very proud of what the team has managed to deliver for the games. I believe strongly that we have really delivered one of the best AAA open water experience. Working with Singapore Studio has always been a, a great pleasure. The level of expertise and talent actually grew along the last 10 years, and so their focus on quality is something very important. I'm not surprised at all that they are now able to, uh, to bring their own uh, IP with Skull & Bones. We are super happy and excited about how well Assassin's Creed Origins has been received. Uh, the team here in Singapore has been looking over the reviews and the different Reddit posts and finding the quest built in Fayum and getting really excited that the players love our stories and love the game in general. Bayek is one of the, the favourite assassins within the brand and Assassin's Creed is, is truly back with Assassin's Creed Origins. <laughs>